I, a lot of people ask about in terms of 2019 and getting to 2019, they ask about Noah and whether stretching his contract makes sense um, no. in terms of 2019. No, I mean, I, I've been long saying I would not stretch him unless I absolutely had to. So for instance, like the Lakers, you know, just 10 minutes ago where they found out what, that LeBron was coming before anyone reported it. If the Knicks find out next summer that we unsuccessfully could trade Courtney Lee, there was no other way to create cap space, but there is a superstar that wants to come here. And the only way to make it happen is you stretch Noah. Then at that moment, <sighs> I will stretch Noah. But other than that, I want to just ride it out and use other, because I even think, you know, we're talking about all these things about who replaces, you know, KO and all this stuff. You know, Noah can play a fine role next year. Um, yeah, I thought he could have played a fine role last year. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just like, ride it out. So we have even more cap space in 2020. There's no reason to do it if you don't need to do it. And like I, I just said, the way where you would need to do it is a pretty extreme example. Yeah. Now, let me ask you all this, because I'm, I'm looking at the graphic. I have the graphic pulled up right now. So you're saying if, if we stretched them in 2019, right, we would yep. gain about $13 million in cap space. Right. However, in 2020, we would lose six. Right? Yeah, right, because they would have to take, so that along the top of the graphic, that $19 million, Yeah. when you stretch him, you basically divide that by three. Okay. So... As long as it's after September 1. If you wait till September 1, the 2018-19 salary just stays on the books. And then you would only stretch out the next, uh, that last year for three years. So the point is, right now, I think like we were talking earlier, they have about $20, $21 million in cap space. So a max contract's around $34 million. Mm -hmm. So it sort of works out perfect where, if, again, if you couldn't trade Courtney Lee or you couldn't do some of these other things, you stretch Noah that that could get you there also waiting to re-sign KP, but you lose for those two years that that six and a half million. So, so, so another devil's advocate question here, right? If the cap is supposed to increase in 2020 and 2021 to, I think it was about 119 million. Mm. Um, how much is that 6 million that you were losing worth if the cap is expected to go up? Yeah, I think if that we would, let's see, I can actually look at my little tape. Yeah. yeah. So right now, if they don't stretch Noah and the, and just didn't sign anyone really else in long term, they could have up to, with Hardaway Jr.'s contract, up to $40 million in cap space. Uh, mm. Or you you said in one in 2019 or yeah 2020? if they did it in 2019 when they get the when they get the oh um, I'm sorry I was thinking you're saying 2020 no in 2019 that 109 just means I think before the projection was around like 108 so it didn't really go up the projection de doesn't really change the calculus that much it, it's about what we were saying it was right but for 2020 didn't they say it could go up to I think 119. Oh, what, yeah, 116. 116. 116. Yeah. Right. So what I'm saying is if it went up that much in 2020, is that extra six million a detriment if we don't have it? If it meant having that extra twelve next year to go after, let's say for argument's sake, Kyrie, to get Kyrie that, well, that thirty to that thirty mil. The problem is if they wanted to add another max player, you basically with like, remember, by 2020, you're going to have KP's extension, which is going to be close to $30 million. Yeah, you I think yeah, it's it definitely going to hit 30 for sure. Right. So you, you would also have Tim Hardaway Jr. Maybe you can trade him by then when it's just one year left. But just Tim Hardaway Jr. and, and KP would be like close to $50 million. Oh, shit. So every penny would count if you wanted another max player. So I would say... You could use that in 2019, maybe to get a max player. Again, if you don't do it in other ways, like trading Lee or waving some other players, mm -hmm. but um, you would then lose probably the chance in 2020 to sign because that $6 million could, could be the difference when you then have those big salaries like KPs and whoever you sign in 2019 that you're not obviously going to take off the books. It, hurt. it would hurt to just like lose all that when you're one year from freedom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like one year from freedom and then you stretch him. It's like, ah, I understand though. With somebody big like Kyrie comes, 
then you got to seriously consider it. But um, even if that happens, I'm like, I'm doing some tests on his knees, man. I'm having to go to the doctor. Stretch out. Stress I'm test. Give him a stress test. Yeah, I'm going to give him the MPJ treatment. If the Knicks were whoa, a lot whoa, whoa. closer. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. LeBron James has agreed to a four-year, $154 million deal with the Lakers. Oh. Oh, really? Uh, 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 that was easy. So I, I knew it, it though. I knew so it. We got, Everybody we got to do it live on the stream. We right broke now. it live That's on Nick's fan TV 